aware that they are being videotaped. In order to meet the requirements of Pennsylvania Sunshine Law, it is necessary to record the names of all citizens who speak to the board during the meeting. To assure compliance with this requirement, it is essential that those planning to address the board come to the microphone and state their name and address. Members of the audience are asked to limit their questions and comments to no more than five minutes. This limit will permit time for all those who wish to speak to the board to do so, and whenever the members of the audience exceed this time, the board president may ask the individual to yield the microphone to the next speaker. This is in reference to board policy 834.2. Okay, does uh, anybody here tonight have a birthday? <laughs> anybody? Oh, Mr. Shapinsky oh. said Mr. Schilling does. Maybe he'd like to do the pledge for us this evening. Do you remember? <laughs> Happy birthday, John. Thank you. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Happy birthday, John. <laughs> All right. Well, John, would you like to tell us how old you are? It's probably less than the budget. I'm 39 again. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, I recommend approval to appoint Dottie Hatfield as Dorothy Hatfield as board secretary pro tem for purposes of this evening's meeting. Is there a motion? So moved. Motion by Schilling, second by O'Donnell. Questions? Questions. Ms. Mayor, when, are, uh, when, is it, uh, when is the board going to uh, approve the board secretary? When is the appropriate time of year for that to happen? Well, my understanding is that could happen at any time. I believe personnel is, has that under some advisement currently, and I would anticipate before September there be an appointment. Thank you. Thank you. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed nay. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, it's your turn, audience of citizens. You're first this evening. The agenda's, the agenda's before you, Mrs. Tennant. And Mr. Graziano, you're after. Uh, Bobby Penniman, Lansdale Borough. Um, I'd just like to know if there has been a delay in submitting our budget to Harrisburg, and if there has been, has there uh, been a financial repercussion? No. No. That's all. Thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Penniman. Mr. Graziano. Uh, Bob Graziano, Tom Manson. Uh, I have a question about uh, the sheriff's sale that occurred a week or so ago. Um, we're netting approximately, I think, $600,000 between the sheriff's sale and those who came forward to pay so they wouldn't have their property sold. Uh, I'd like to know uh, how that's accounted for in this budget, if at all, and if it's not, uh, how does it get accounted for? The, um, the way those kinds of things are accounted for is on the basis of estimated interim taxes. As they change hand, hands, they will be taxed. Um, there's no guarantee uh, of the dates or the amounts, and obviously they'll be reassessed once the uh, final closings take place. Settlement. So, so is that approximately six hundred thousand in this budget as anticipated um, revenue? Not specifically that six hundred thousand, but we have an estimate in for transfer taxes and for delinquent taxes. We don't know who will not pay their taxes this year either, so we have to estimate those kinds of revenues. But as far as the ones that we know took place at sheriff sale and we know came forward with cash, how much of that is in this budget? Um, I have I have the um, April first official records of whatever is transacted at the county um, is included in these records, and we adjust it last week for the sale of the Keenest Road property, which, as I explained last week, will not come online until January first even though it's now owned by someone other than ourselves, we do not start collecting taxes until January. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Anybody else, please? Again? Okay, thank you. Superintendent. Okay, Superintendent's report. Recommend approval for adoption of the proposed budget for the fiscal year ending 630.99 in, in the amount of $117,459,479 for the fiscal year ending 630.99 per resolution as circulated. Sir, motion. So moved. Motion by Shapinsky. Second. Second by Schilling. Questions? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, nay. 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 Roll call, Mrs. Hatfield. Allen. Yes. Hill. Yes. Krieger. No. Mangle. Yes. <coughs> Mosey. No. Sher. No. Schilling. Yes. Weiss. Oh, I think he's the wrong ones. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think done. these are the wrong ones in here. <laughs> no. No. Oh, 
I was told I wasn't going to be here tonight. <laughs> yes. Okay. And Mr. Kinsky. Yes. Okay. Six in favor of the amendment. Yes. Yes, you do. Okay. B. Recommend approval of a tax of 15.7408705 mills being at the rate of. $1.57408705 on each $100 of assessed valuation of taxable property of North Penn School District located in Montgomery County for the fiscal year ending 63099 per resolution as circulated. So moved. Motion by Gallagher. Second. Second by Chief Questions? Yes. Yes, sir. Uh, Mr. Deddy, this 15.7408705, is that under the new millage rate? Mm -hmm. Yes, that is that is the new millage. Well, I thought under the new millage rate, a mill was equivalent to five million dollars. <coughs> I'm a little I'm a little confused here because I, I see fifteen out of fifteen mills. Uh, what, what is your what, what are you asking? Well, what I'm asking you is that I understand going through the budget process that under the new millage rate, one mill was equivalent to five million dollars. Okay, I, I don't know that that's the case. Well, let me let me just give you a real quick way of of determining uh, what approximately what the millage should be. Assume that your your past millage was somewhere in the vicinity of three hundred mills, right. somewhere between two eighty and three hundred, whatever that is. Three hundred thousand dollars a mill. Okay. Assume that uh, uh, that uh, uh, this year the um, uh, the millage should be about one twentieth of that, and the reason for that is because last year the ratio was approximately five percent. It was five point three or five point four percent, which is about one twentieth of a hundred percent. This year it's a hundred percent. So assume that the, the ratio between this year's millage and last year's millage, if all things were equal and there was no increase, should be approximately twenty to one. So you're the difference between the one millage and the other should be about 300 to about 15. I don't want to get involved in the dollars and how much it is. It's really rather complicated to do it that way. But just to give you an idea where you are, that's approximately, uh, that, that verifies the number. Okay, I'm just trying to relate because the book states it's approximately 9.2 9 mills or something like that, and then I see 15.75 and under the new millage rate. I was led to believe all through the budget process that under the new millage rate, one mill was equivalent to five million dollars. Well, again, I uh, then when I, I see fifteen, you know, I'm just trying to I'm just trying to get it straight in my own mind. We raising it fifteen mills or nine mills. I, I don't know where I don't know where a number of nine mills would would come from. That would oh. seem to be. It was under the old. I know the old what it was. I know what it was. <coughs> it was what I'm sorry. They asked. Um, even though it's impractical for some kind of benchmark, they asked me to convert the new mills to the old mills so that they can have a feeling of confidence of what, how does this compare to prior years when they use mills. You know, I think well, we're still using mills. 0.05 rate. <coughs> yeah, but it was nine mills. Well, what, the, the analysis I just gave you by comparing the old ratios, which is essentially 20 to 1, should essentially be your conversion rate. So I don't know what other tables of conversion you've been given. But the conversion rate that I just gave you is approximately accurate. Okay, thank you. Any other questions? Question. Um, uh, either Mrs. Danny or Mr. Bartle. Um, the 15.74 mills is the millage needed to pay for the um, for the projected. Uh, expenditures for next year. Is that correct? Well, um, Carol, you probably more suitable to answer this. I, I would not say so because there are other matters of income that are within your budget. Mm -hmm. In other words, mm -hmm. you, would, you, you would have to add what taxes you receive plus other matters of income in order to... I understand. Come I understand up. Okay. My question is, maybe I should ask it this way. Is the 15.75 mills, which was used in the calculation for people in the community, 
um, what is necessary <coughs> to come to the 113,000, the 113 million dollar figure in the proposed budget for next year. Under, under revenue budget, revenues, page 28. <coughs> Yes. Or is that for the 121 million? I think I'm going to refer to council again. Well, okay, I'm not, uh, I'm not your, uh, your, your accountant or your business director. Let me tell you what this number reflects. If you take, um, if you take this milk and multiply it times the total amount of taxable uh, dollars, in other words, if you multiply it times your total taxable assessment, in your school district, all right? And I'm, I'm assuming we add the Montgomery and the Bucks numbers together, all right? Uh, that will, that number will, should match what your anticipated tax and revenues are. And if I might add, no, Frank, I'm, I'm, Lafer, if you take 293 mills times the lower amount, it still comes out to the same. Yeah, they, they, that's right. So it's just an inversion of the number. It's exactly right. Okay, so the combination between the Montgomery Mills and the Bucks County Mills. Give you your total real estate tax revenue. Under the revenue budget here. Whatever budget okay. you have is. All right. Having said that then, knowing that this budget is going to total $117 million, and we know that we're going to begin the next year, uh, the 98-99 budget year, with a almost a $7.5 million cash resource, beginning cash resources, why is it necessary to have that high of a millage rate? Because you're appropriating that $7.5 million to help pay for next year. Your, your budget's only $117 million. Your total revenues that you're taking in is $121 million. No. You're appropriating a portion of your free balance towards next year's expenditures. I understand that. But, but what is the question? Mr. Bartle, is there a section in the school code which pertains to exactly what um, school districts are allowed to assess uh, or allowed to um, assess in a levy in relationship to the budget and that it should not be over? Uh, what it is that you're going to need monetarily to pay for the budget next year. I mean, it, it, in past years, and I've brought my past budgets, there have been years uh, in the recent past where the budget has evened out and has shown zero at the end of the year, uh, with $1.5 million being held in budget reserve. And in the last few years, um, the district has seen um, beginning cash balances uh, in in excess of uh, six million, four million, almost seven million, and now we're up to seven point five million in beginning cash reserves. And in my opinion, that is definitely showing an overcarriage of tax dollars from years prior. There, money that we're taxing. There is nothing that precludes you from having. Uh, from from having uh, uh, revenue in reserve uh, uh, to the extent that uh, uh, that the amount of revenue that you have in reserve is appropriate or inappropriate I would suggest that those are more in the line of, of generally accepted uh, accounting rules than they are than they are uh, uh, a matter of, of a legal determination Carol can perhaps tell you what amounts you have in reserve and and what is generally accepted I, I wouldn't know the answer to that. the um, Commonwealth um, we've gone over this in different committees. The Commonwealth recommends you have a minimum of 3% to 7% at all times in your reserve. Um, since North Penn is a large school district, we satisfy the requirement for a, an appropriate reserve on the low end, or 3%. So the way we're looking now, we will hit the 3% by the end of 1999, a year from now. Um, that is a projection. Obviously, that could be a little less or a little more, but keeping in mind that we should not fall below 3%, we are certainly um, headed in that direction at this time. Thank you. Anybody else? All those 
Recommend approval of a tax of 321.2408163 mills being at the rate of $32.1240863 on each $100 of assessed valuation of taxable property of North, <coughs> North Penn School District located in Bucks County for the fiscal year ending 63099 per resolution as circulated. So moved. Motion by Hill. <coughs> Second by O'Donnell. Questions? Yes, yeah. I have one question. A couple questions, I'm sorry. This is Daddy. Um, did you receive a letter from the State Tax Equalization Board in regards to the common level ratio for assessing the millage that is listed here um, in regards to um, the budget this year, as we did for the no. Montgomery County? No. Um, Mr. Solicitor, isn't it noted in the um, School code, I believe it's um, section 672.1 in school districts line in more than one county or in more than one municipality that the uh, millage um, should be set to guarantee that it's in uniformity with uh, this county's millage rate. Um, that it should be set by the state tax equalization board. I have 672.1 in front of me. Where, where, so where, do I. Okay, where, where specifically are you referring? A. My concern is that if we haven't received verification from from uh, the state tax well, let me, equalization, let me just read it and then fine. I'll answer. It's a sizable increase. For, the, for those people. <clears throat> okay, uh, this particular section uh, does not say that we should necessarily receive any particular document from the State Tax Equalization Board. Uh, essentially what we did uh, was uh, was to take the uh, ratio that currently exists in Bucks County uh, per the uh, uh, Bucks County Board of Assessment Appeals, which is uh, the exact number by percentage that it is that is uh, uh, that the assessment relates to market value. What the state tax equalization board gives you is essentially the same ratio, but they give it to you another way. In other words, what they would do is tell you how many times uh, the uh, uh, a 100% valuation would be of the uh, ratio that exists in the county. In other words, in past years in Montgomery County, they, what the Board of Assessment would have used was 5.3 or 5.4. <coughs> The state tax equalization board numbers would come back to you as approximately 18.5. In other words, the number of times that, that 5.3 or 5.4 goes into 100. Did you see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. There is there is no requirement in this section that we necessarily receive any letter from the state tax equalization board concerning that. But the board of assessment uses that information and and actually state tax equalization board receives their information from the county that gives you that ratio. Regardless of which way the ratio is stated, it's the same thing. And and that ratio is reflected in these numbers. Well then why was it necessary to get a letter from them in regards to the Montgomery County uh, thing? I think you know we had the reassessment and the state board or the county board of assessments uh, came out with one ratio which the was county, not what we're using. The county gave us a number of 100%. That's my understanding of, yep. of what exists in Montgomery County today. 
In other words, the new numbers will reflect 100% of market value. I mean, quibble with that on any given property as to whether the number is right or not, but what it's determined to be is 100% of market value. So if they determine your property is worth $100,000, your assessment will be $100,000. If in Bucks County, for example, they determine that the market value of your property is $100,000, they will use an assessment of $4,900 because they are using a 4.9% ratio. Okay. Okay, and I guess finally, um, I just have a concern, Mr. Bartle, um, with the um, way that uh, legal notice was given for uh, for this budget. Um, read the sections in the school code that pertain to notif legal notification uh, on the budget and taxation, and found that um, uh, it was very different this year than in years past as far as. Um, what was printed in the legal notice initially for the June 22nd meeting, um, it was not as specific um, as the notice in the paper for tonight's meeting. And I was wondering about that difference, as well as the fact that it's pretty, the school code's pretty specific that before any final vote is taken on any budget, there, uh, there are time specifications put on us uh, to give legal notice 15 days before the vote uh, as well as allowing a period of 10 days prior to the public hearing on the final vote uh, for members of the public uh, to come in and peruse the document and be able to um, have their chance to remonstrate any concerns they may have. So I would like any clarification that you can give as to why the disparity and whether or not those folks in Bucks County who were not notified in, uh, initially uh, that uh, they were going to uh, that we were going to approve this budget that involved them, but as well uh, to the to the millage rate that we're uh, assessing on them. Well, let me I'm, I'm concerned about uh, future legal. Well, let me discuss the issue of, of notice with respect to the legal advertisements. Uh, the legal advertisements uh, in, in both meetings are made in accordance with the Pennsylvania Sunshine Law <coughs> and what is required in, uh, in Pennsylvania statutes uh, with respect to the holding of this meeting or the one that took place uh, last week. The notice for this meeting is far more particular as it relates to four or five items uh, I would assume that that was done in light of the fact that whatever other business you had to transact last week uh, has already been taken care of, and this was the only remaining business that uh, uh, need be taken care of. But in any event, um, it's it's my understanding that the uh, uh, that the uh, uh, that the notice for last week was done appropriately. As far as this week is concerned, I've I've reviewed it and it was done appropriately. Um, as far as uh, when the budget was available here. Uh, for inspection, I would have to refer that to uh, either uh, 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 Dr. Hassler or uh, Mrs. Deddy to answer that. Uh, obviously, I'm not the administrator here. Maybe Dr. Hassler knows uh, when it was uh, when I, it was made. I available. know that the board itself did not receive the final document until the night of June 22nd. I myself did not receive the final budget until I came for it myself this morning. Well, there there is no requirement that that what you actually <coughs> finally adopt uh, be necessarily available. The requirement is that your proposed budget be available, as, as I understand. In other words, you can change a particular provision. This board may do that. Uh, someone may do that by, uh, by, uh, by an amendment to the budget motion uh, uh, passing by a majority of the, uh, of the members of the board. Uh, if, if I understand your question correctly. You know, well, isn't it customary practice to at least have, uh, you know, the board members be able to see the final documents or, uh, you know, documents that pertain to any of our business uh, prior to the night that we come to vote on it? Certainly, I would, I would think, I would think that that would be the case. But, but again, you're asking me from a legal standpoint what is required in terms of, in terms of public notice, um, in terms of public notice. If, if it is the case that the, that the proposed budget has been uh, uh, appropriately left for members of the public to inspect, 
uh, it is not the case that the board cannot change that proposed budget at some future time. As a matter of fact, uh, to my knowledge, it has always been your practice that the budget were to, was to be changed in some way uh, between its original proposal and its subsequent adoption. And I think in the uh, uh, in the years that we've been here, um, uh, the last couple of years, that has in fact been the case. That there's been a difference between that which was initially proposed and that which was finally adopted. So, if I'm to understand you correctly, that the notification that was put in to the papers last, or just the reporter uh, last Thursday, I think it was Thursday and Friday, appeared in the paper, um, is sufficient notice yes. to. Uh, the folks in, in our Bucks County uh, community that we um, tax, um, and that the Sunshine Law, the, the section of the Sunshine Law that you're um, pertaining to preempts what is in the school code as far as proper notice. No, no, you're, you're, you're talking about you're talking about requirements in terms of days with respect to allowing the public to to see the the proposed budget. I didn't say in any way that that was preempted. It's my understanding that that was complied with. So we don't have to give 15 days notice as to exactly what we're going to tax. It just pertains to the budget document itself, not to the, the tax assessment or the tax levy itself. We don't have to give 15 days notice of the tax levy. No, my understanding of the, of the notice provision that you're referring to has to do with the budget. And, well, we're, we're discussing item 3C, the, the millage that we're assessing about the county. And my question now, the millage, the millage may to, very well change within and probably has from the time that you initially propose a budget. It may so very well no, be the case. So there's no legal requirement that we have to give any kind of timely notice of what we are assessing in millage. No, the That's notice, my question. The notices are provided, and then you set up the, the the meeting pursuant to the requirements of the Sunshine Law, at which point you then <coughs> adopt your millage as you determine it to be appropriate, and also adopt your budget. Thank you. Mr. Barrow, case in point that evening, I offered those unhappy with the budget an opportunity to take out any programs or make any last minute slashes to the budget they would wish to make, which would change the tax millage for that evening. I mean, that's why, you know, I guess, you know, it can't be set because up to that very evening it's approved, it could change. Yeah, I, I think we're talking about two different things. We're talking about okay. about notice that has to be given pursuant to the school code, which I think was done. And then the, the issue is, is what notice is required to hold this meeting. Right. And obviously there'll be changes between any proposal, whether it be millage or whether it be budget. And those right. things have often been negotiated by members of the board to get to final numbers. But you can't advertise in advance what your millage rate is going to be because it has not been approved. <coughs> Up to the night it's approved, it could change. Yes, it could. That's fine. Any other question? The only reason is because in past years there has been legal notices, as in tonight's, uh, as was noticed in the notices for tonight's meeting, the, the millage that was going to be assessed. And as far as making cuts in the budget, I personally of the mind when you start off with almost an $8 million cash resource, it seemed to me like you needed to raise taxes very much at all, let alone almost nine mils or 15 mils, whatever. Thank you. Good question. Go ahead. Um, Mr. Bartle mentioned the 4.9% ratio, but Carol, when we had discussions, you were talking 4.8%. Which common level ratio did you base this millage uh, on? Excuse me, Mr. Chair. I just used that for example. Okay. I, I didn't verify that, that number. I, I just know. That's why I'm at. That's in, why I'm, in, in the conversation, it's not my job to be verifying no, the numbers. Th that's why I'm asking her to please verify the number that she used. <clears throat> uh, Jay Taylor from your office uh, telephoned us into me on Thursday. Okay. That's where I got it from this chair. Okay. Which number did you use to base this millage on? Uh, Which common level rate? 4.9. What did she say? It was 4.9 because you talked to me about. I thought it would. Either 4.8 or 4.9, but you had to make the legal determination of which one is most appropriate. When oh, it's 4.9? Yes. Okay, that's fine because that's the 96 common level ratio for Bucks County. And I know that you had discussed using 4.8, and I was a little concerned about that because the two year lag, we should be using 96. I had to wait for a legal opinion as to which one to use. Okay. And I guess, so to speaking, to Mrs. Kruger's point, although she went a little broader than I would. 
My biggest concern regarding what's what's occurring here tonight with the Long Lexington Bucks County millage is that unlike North Penn residents which came to receive a preliminary budget or have followed the coverage of the school board meetings, they've at least had a relevant millage rate to relate to. And most school districts which fall into two different counties such as ours would have in their budget the millage for, say, Chester County as well as the millage as it's related to Montgomery County or be it um, like Upper Perk with Berks County and the millage for North uh, for Montgomery County. <coughs> These residents have had really no baseline for judgment of the tax levy that's going to come forward to them in as much as it's never been articulated within any official document, within any official advertisement, which is a process that we go through in preparing for the preliminary budget and in the advertisement by school code of um, the pending budget vote. And I, I, while, while it may be legal and it certainly wasn't intentional on the part of the district to withhold this information, it's, it's, a, it's a victim, they're a victim of circumstance and past <coughs> ghosts from, of um, poor uh, processes and from the past again, not from the future. But as we're catching up with it, they're going to be hit with almost a 39 mil tax hike and they couldn't see it coming. And, and ethically, it seems very wrong for them to be treated with a different baseline of information and opportunity than what's been required, you know, by law, basically, for Montgomery County residents for every budget process I've ever followed. And I would like to commend Carol and our solicitor's office, though, for reacting and, and working to clean this up to prepare for tonight. I know that there was a a lot of uh, internal discussions and review and a lot of study for such a unique situation to have occurred like this that, that would challenge any school district solicitor and financial department in, in upon the, the discovery. So I'd like to pass on those commendations, but I'd also like to note how um, extremely unfortunate it is for the residents of, of this area to have to be faced with this sudden um, dilemma and tax increase. Okay. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed nay? Nay. Roll call, Mr. Hill? Yes. Krieger? No. Mosey? No. Sheriff? No. Shelley? Yes. O'Donnell? Yes. Allen? Yes. Chapinski? Yes. Mangle. Yes. Recommend approval of a real estate transfer tax resolution providing for a 1% tax upon transfer of an interest property. So moved. Question by Schilling? Second. Second by Allen. Questions? Yes. Yes, Is this a new tax that we're imposing? No, sir. We have this, we have this tax. We have this now? Yes. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions, please? All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed nay. Thank you. Motion to adjourn. Sure.